it's Lon Sybin, and a viewer and supporter, Alan Bank, wrote in, and he wanted me to check out the Lenovo G50-30, and this is it right here. Now, this looks like any other computer you might see in your Best Buy or Staples uh, aisle, but uh, what's unique about it is its price. This is a, a fully functional Windows PC that is only about $250 at the time that I'm recording this video. That is very inexpensive, and why is it so inexpensive? Well, it is built with the same guts that are basically finding their way into a lot of low-end Chromebooks out there, which we've been taking a lot of different looks at. Uh, and this one is running with a Bay Trail N2830 processor. It's very similar to what you might find in the Asus Chromebox that has the similar processor. And uh, what makes this inexpensive is the fact that its version of Windows is uh, given away or given very cheaply to the manufacturers who are building these low-end PCs so they can start competing more uh, with these Chromebooks and boxes. So this ver version of Windows is called Windows with Bing, but I haven't yet found anything that won't run on it. So as far as I'm concerned, this is Windows. It might not have like the remote desktop server capability and some of the other features that are added onto other versions of Windows that are more expensive, but as far as booting it up and running stuff on it, as a matter of what I've put into the computer, it's been able to run. So I think it's uh, pretty capable there. Uh, it has a large 15.6 inch screen on board. Uh, not very high resolution though. It's only 1366 by 768. So uh, basically like a 720p display. It's not bad. I mean, it's what you'd expect in a PC of this size at this price. Uh, but because it's so big, you get a nice keyboard here. It's pretty uh, large keys, you know, full-size keys. And you have a little number pad on the side here as well. Uh, the touchpad is okay. It's a little flaky for me. Not the best, but again, about in line with what you'd expect at this price point. Uh, Hardware-wise, it has uh, that Intel processor we mentioned. It also has two gigabytes of RAM. Unlike Chromebooks, it has a lot of internal storage. It has 320 gigabytes of storage space on a spinning hard drive. So it doesn't have an SSD like those Chromebooks do, uh, but it does have a lot more storage for things that you can store and view and listen to or watch uh, while you're offline. Ports, it has a few. It's got a VGA output port here. Uh, it has a uh, Ethernet jack here, and they kind of made it a little bit smaller. You have to kind of pull it down here. I don't know if you can see that, but you can pull it down here to plug in an Ethernet uh, cable to get on a wired network. It has HDMI out. USB 2.0 right here, a USB 3.0 port over here, and you've got another uh, USB 2 port on this side, a card reader, and a headphone jack. It has a place for an optical drive. This particular version at this price doesn't have the optical drive, but uh, other, you know, there's a few other options in the line that you can get uh, a DVD burner built in as well. So uh, hardware-wise, it's pretty decent. You know, it feels, you know, kind of what you'd expect a $250 PC to feel like. And we're going to take a look at just a couple things running on it. Now, it's important to note. Uh, is that when you're buying a PC for $250, you shouldn't focus on what it can't do. It's really more about what it can do. And uh, from what I've seen in my testing, it feels like uh, any PC would uh, when you're paying $250. And I think that's the breakthrough here, is getting a Windows PC that boots up Windows without any hacking, which we had to do on some of the Chrome OS devices, uh, at a very reasonable price. So let's take a look at uh, something that might push the hardware a little bit. So here's our first little test. We're going to run the Dolphin emulator, which is a Nintendo GameCube emulator. So this is about a 10-year-old game or so. And, uh, you know, it's good to run this because it taxes the processor as well as the video hardware. So it's really, you know, the kind of the full package. And we're getting about 15 to 20 frames per second here, just bouncing around this uh, opening screen here. So not spectacular, but uh, certainly better than I'd expect something like this at this price point to do. And I like to run this first because I get always, when I do these low-end machines, I get so many people writing in, does it run this game? Does it run that game? The bottom line is this is not a gaming PC. You could probably shoehorn some game on here to run uh, if you, you know, turn down all the graphic uh, quality and all that kind of stuff, or, you know, run like an older game that's like, you know, five to ten years old or something. But uh, this is really a good example of what uh, its hardware is capable of. It can run a GameCube game at about 20 frames per second or so. So uh, it's not going to run the latest Call of Duty or something like that, but it's certainly going to be uh, more than usable uh, for light graphics tasks and maybe some older games as well. Now, another test that I like to perform is the Octane test from Google. It is a JavaScript benchmarking tool which kind of looks at how the computer and browser combination can execute web-based JavaScript tasks, which, by the way, is what you'll be doing most of the time uh, with a machine like this. And the score actually was pretty impressive, 7,399. I'm running Chrome. Uh, and that actually bests the Asus C200 Chromebook, which uh, scored only about 7,100 when I did my test initially on that machine. Uh, the average on this, I did about 10 tests uh, over the last couple days. Uh, the average has been 7,269. So even though this processor, which is identical to the Asus processor, uh, is a little bit slower, it's actually performing a little bit better 
on this JavaScript benchmark test, and it's running Windows on top of that. So uh, kind of an impressive score on here uh, versus a Chromebook that's re really running an operating system just to get uh, Chrome running efficiently. So uh, it feels about what that Asus felt like as far as its responsiveness and speed. So it's not going to be a speed demon. Uh, it's a little bit hampered by the fact that it's got a spinning hard drive. So if you're used to an SSD, you'll certainly feel it there. But you know what? For $250, this is a good and functional Windows computer. And if you're really not into the Chromebooks and you want something that runs Windows, uh, this might be something worth looking at. I do hope that they come out with something a little bit smaller because I really like the form factor of those 11 and 13 inch Chromebooks. So I am sure we're going to see uh, more computers like this that will be maybe the same size or a little bit larger and also some uh, that will be a little bit smaller because it looks like Microsoft is not ready to cede the low end of the marketplace to Google anytime soon. So we'll keep an eye on uh, how things are coming along. But in the meantime, this is actually a pretty decent low end Windows PC. This is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching.